Well, what's up, everybody? Hi, Hi. Happy the New Year. Camera's not working, of course. 2022. Why would it work? Camera's not working? No. Nah. You need me? I could, Do I need you? I could push buttons over there. <laughs> Obviously, you're pushing random buttons. They don't need to see us. I think it's the Alt oh. F4 K button. <laughs> okay. Try that. Uh, well, Happy New Year, everybody. I know you can't see us, so... Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I agree with that Ed Sorensen stories. All of them are amazing. We have some other ones in store that I think you guys are going to love, love, love. Yeah. It's amazing. He's... What can you say? Yeah, I have no idea why this is not working, honestly. Um... So let me see. Let me see if I can fix it on the fly. We'll do it live. Um. Okay, hold on. I'm watching him. Uh, fix but you can it. you can I'm start re- answering. Comments start yet? answering. Yeah. Let's see. That's right now, so we're nice. all just giving each other greetings, warm Happy New Year greetings from everybody. Thank you oh, yeah. so much. We appreciate it. <clears throat> and. Uh, Oh, yeah. I saw that when Ed said divine intervention, Gus's face popped into my head. I don't know. I think Gus would have probably been respectful to that. Ed does believe there are times where things just come to him. But, yes, he has an amazing intuition that comes with experience, knowing caves. And we were talking today that it is so difficult not just to find the bodies and to get the bodies out from where they may be because that's both mentally and physically draining but then you know because of that floating effect of the bodies to get them all the way out of the cave is it's just it's really really difficult to imagine being able to do that by yourself and he does and he does it all as you all know on his own dime because he can and it's uh, really important to families to get those bodies. Okay, well, none of this stuff is working, Woody. So we might have to Uh-oh. stop this and figure it out and then go back live. But I don't know. Will they all still be there? Or do you have to no, like they're probably going to leave. They have, they have low patience with our shenanigans. I don't know if you've noticed. Well, no, they'll be there. I wish I there. knew what to do. Have you tried the old-fashioned <laughs> reboot or unplug and plug-in That's, methodologies? Is that know, still a thing? I'll, yes. That was the old way. All control, That's, delete. Or power cord. I love the power cord no, way. No, let's not do that. It always works. You just unplug <sighs> and plug in. Mm. Yeah, everybody, I, I like that one. June said, are we all still in a cave? That's a good point. You guys are cave. This is what it looks like at times, folks. Gus wanted let to me, simulate a cave. There it is. Let me, let me reboot. Screen. Let's see. I, I, oh, I, the reboot. Did you I, take my on, advice? On, this is let, awesome. Let's do this live. Huh? Wow. I don't know what's going to happen when I do this. but My method may work. I'm going to unplug the, the black magic. I told you. I didn't even know what I was talking about. And unplugging is now part of the technical solution. Always works. Everybody, I like it. Yep, we have three lights. Everybody got their line, three lights, cookies, and arrows. Everybody has the right amount of gas. And we are entering the cave. And I have some surprises that I can't wait to discuss with everybody, but I can't really discuss it because our our technology department... Is having issues. <laughs> I've got to get on the tech department. We are having issues here. Our tech department is just horrible. I don't know what's going on with them. They can't get a good tech department anymore. Um, yes, we need Ed to rescue us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're stuck in the cave right now, as you can see from the screen, everybody. Patrick, thank you so much. Patrick just gave us a very nice gift. And Patrick, man, you have been doing some diving on that rebreather. You recently got sure. certified with me, and he has been on that rebreather in South Florida, sharing great videos and photos. I love the shark one, Patrick. That was great. Seeing that shark on the wreck like that, so cool. 
And you had all the time in the world on that wreck. I know. It's great. No rush. Yeah. This is not working. Um, it's all Gus's fault, like usually it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, so a lot of people keep asking us, have we watched the movie about the dive rescue of the Thai soccer team? What Thai soccer so, team? So just <laughs> – that's our funny response. Oh, really? There was a rescue there? Yes, we have. Yes, we're going to react to it, and the reaction will be extremely unique. Like, you are going to want to see it even more than the movie. We're going to have some very creditable – information i'm trying not to give it away you're gonna want to watch our reaction eventually when we do the thai rescue reaction it, it's awesome that we have the opportunity to have on who we're gonna have on we're very fortunate okay he happens to be a kiss rebreather diver and very oh my god in hey did you fix it we're I, on. that's us we're no I, uh so you got your lights the lights are working. The cave. I mean, we're well, out of the cave. We're yeah. Technology. We, just, All right. we made it through. Wow! Hi everyone. <laughs> we're we're here. That was rough. That was a long swim in the dark. I know. It was like a radio show for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so um, been reacting to comments various comments have been scrolling and for um, those of you who watched the video today by the way what do you guys think about that full silt out zero visibility uh 20 second clip i debated for a while whether we should include it or not some people told me that it was good but uh i didn't know i was like i don't know if uh people would be uh freaked out by it but uh well the thing is is that it wasn't a simulation, by the way. It was <laughs> no, no, no. is had, the real deal. No, I had the real deal. I couldn't see anything. It's a it's a piece of, a, it's a snippet from a video of a dive that Woody went into that is actually coming out next week. So it was planned. Yeah, that silt out was planned. There's nothing like, oh man, we made it. I made an error. Planned? No, it's going to happen. You have to go through that restriction and silt it out. And then get rewarded with an incredible huge chamber on the other side of it. But because it's planned, everybody, and you are following the protocols, it's not a big deal. You just keep going and you're holding the line. So I got my line on the left. Yes, I can't see, literally cannot see anything. And we had a big discussion recently on Facebook. When you can't see your handset, for those of you that are rebreathers, what do you do? You don't know your PO2. Do you add O2 every so often? No. Just add dill. You know, it's a known gas. Anyway, that's not a discussion for this, but um, yep, not I a think big deal. And you're always going to come out of it on the other side and you get rewarded, but you got to be able to go through that. I think the interesting part is that, you know, for those of you who watched that clip for 20 seconds, like imagine Ed going into that for an unknown amount of time, looking for a person in an unknown part of the cave not knowing where he is, not knowing what he's going to find and what situation he's going to be. And he's just going into that no visibility by feel looking inside a cave. Yeah, I mean, he's on a line. He's, <laughs> Willingly. he's tied off, but still very, very difficult. Some people ask, yeah. why do you hold the line like that? You're holding the line so that you, you, we call it okay in it tightly so it doesn't come out of your hand, but you're doing it so the line can slide through and you can move. And then you, if you bump into any parts of, of the line that aren't just the line anymore, like an arrow or where it's tied off, you, you kind of keep your hand on that and feel where the line starts back up again and keep going forward. So you know you're on the line and that's it. If yep. you're on the line, you can get out of the cave if you needed to. But we knew that that was going to open up soon because that's a very well-known chamber that you have that is on the other side of that tight restriction. Jonathan has a good question. Can you see the nerd when it's silted out like that? No, Sometimes always. you can't. That one, no. Yeah. That one, the, if the, even if the nerd's right here, the silt's going to be so clouded. That was that was a full silt out, and no, no chance you would see the nerd even right there in your eye. Maya, thank you for the super chat. So let me answer that question, or at least let me read it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer it, but... I ask you if a wreck diver could safely cave dive or vice versa. If you said 
no to the one, but yes to the other. Can you elaborate? Why would it be safe one way or the other? Risks are similar. Um, no. I, no. No, no, I, no, I don't no, think a wreck no, diver no, would be no. able to cave dive no way. safely. But mm -hmm. I think I think a cave diver could wreck dive. Yep. In advanced wreck, I do teach the advanced wreck class for SSI. Many of the cave diving protocols we use in advanced wreck because we're going to penetrate inside the wreck, potentially going into a no light zone. But a wreck diver doesn't have all the tools and training needed to go inside of a full note light zone cave it's just they don't cross over like that yeah so don't even think about going into a cave if you're rec certified or even, even if you're advanced, advanced rec. rec certified like the advanced rec certification don't. is like what like a day or something and you it's do a, like two dives and it's a small little penetration yeah. it's completely different but we've answered the question it's a it's a definitely do not do that without no. being cave certified Thanks, Alicia. I agree to our answers to her questions. And um, yeah, most cave divers, I think, would say the same thing. We only say it to protect, not because we think we're better, just that we've been trained for cave diving and that we want you to dive safely. That's why we answer this way. Paul is um, asking a question that has come up many times. Why are you not tied up to the line? Because the line is not clear all the time the line has stuff in it uh the line is tied up at multiple places inside the cave and because we don't always dive in the line we make jumps to other lines and we navigate all over the cave so we don't yeah you would be a mess it would be insane and that would get tangled not only that imagine a line connected to the line you're in a natural cave so that line connected line could get all tangled up and create a hazard for yourself and other divers so, no, it's just always being with your hand. Woody and Gus, did either one of you do open circuit tech doubles or side mount before rebreathers? No. I went from recreational to rebreather. Hey, Scott, um, if you want to get certified with me, that would be great. Or Gus, contact C Ventures. Not me, but C Ventures is where we teach. C Ventures is S E A. V as in Victor, E N T U R E S dot com. C Ventures dot com. All the contact information is in there. I and they book, uh -oh, sorry. They I book lost, all of my uh, classes. I lost the chat. I, I was just trying to see. I think there's a way for us to like slow down the chat because they're going so fast. That's and fine. I, I didn't want to miss I didn't want to miss questions. Um Let's see. How many lionfish have we killed so far? I don't know. A lot. Hundreds. I just I got know. back from Cozumel. I was there for a week. Not enough. I wish That's Gus was the there. He wasn't there. I was. Oh, man. <laughs> I went down to 188 feet on this trip, and the current was ripping. But, hey, Gus, yes. while everybody's on now, I think it's been long enough. You know, we've been talking about holding on to that line and so forth. You know how when we're on the line, you know, when you – when. When do you got to put a cookie down? Why don't you explain? What, what, what's a cookie used for? And, and it's kind of a process. Like go through the yeah. process because it's not easy to do that. So basically when we deviate from the main line of the cave, like when we go on a jump or something like that, we use a cookie, which is a marker to indicate where the exit is when you're going into the jump. So like if I'm, if I'm going in the line this way and I'm going to jump that way, I will put a cookie on the main line right before the jump. So when I'm coming out, I have a cookie on the exit side to indicate that that is the exit. Also, when I, when I'm coming back, I will pick up my cookie, which will then will show the last person in my team when they get there, that there's no cookies left, which means that everyone is out. Right. So the last person in the team being the line guy in a cave diving team. So cookies will have the name of the divers. And as they pick them up, they're also showing that they're out. So if I'm the line guy, I'm the last person in the team. I'm the first person in and the last person out. If I'm coming out and I see that there's a cookie on the line and it's not me, it has Woody's name on it. I would freak out. Right. I would be like, whoa, like wh where is Woody? Like I would immediately know that there's a diver missing or lost diver and we would immediately go into a lost diver procedure. So we use cookies to designate, you know, where you are, 
and that you're not there anymore if your cookie is gone. And, and do you have one sitting over there by I, chance? I don't, but I okay, I do. but they're kind of cumbersome. I have an right? arrow. But they look similar. So uh, it's it's a lot of work, kind of. Right. Imagine that, Gus. You have your DPV. Right. You got to come up to that line and hook this thing up. That's not easy. You got to right. stop, not silt out the cave. It's tricky, right? Doesn't it take us a lot of time to yeah, put yeah, those yeah. cookies in? Like this. I wish. Don't you wish there was like a easier way? Like, I, I, wouldn't you love there to be? That takes time to do underwater while you're moving on your DPV and all of that. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to have something like easier? There is uh, something easier. I've heard that people are yeah. trying to use. Yeah, there's something easier, which I bought you. Wow. I'm surprised for you for a change. Awesome. Thank you. And your only decision right now, and then you can show them on camera, do you want the blue or the red? And remember, you're an orange guy. I, I think I know which ones I would be better to go with. Yes. Blue. I think orange will match the blue. Better. Blue. Okay. That's right. So, Gus. Thank you. These are awesome. These are yours, and you can put your name on them. Now, show them this way of putting a cookie on. You just. Right. Doo, 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 doo. All right. Let me see. Hold on. That's the red one. Let me give you your blue ones. I don't want you touching my red one. Okay. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. I'm going to get it out for him, and then he can show you why this is going to make it. While you're on your DPV, man, you don't even have to stop with these bad boys. Just keep on rolling and go. So hold on. I'm so excited to use these with you. Uh, somebody, I'll, I'll answer this one really quick. Somebody has a question. How long would it take me? How long would it take me? Now they know we're together. <laughs> how long would it take me to be cave trained if I had zero experience? It, it, all, it all depends on how quickly you pick up skills. And how much do you dive? There's no shortcut to be cave trained. You have to dive. Thank you. All right. So All right. nice. Now nice. you no longer have to stop on that DPV, yep. baby. So here's the line. Let me show everybody. Here's the cookie the, or the marker now. So now I just clip, clip, go. Just leave it. And, and it will have it. my name yes. on it. So when I'm swimming back, I just take it. That's that awesome? My, that's my new present to you. Beautiful. Love it. Yes. Not even we're have to slow down. We're going to be using those soon. I think people are going to be pretty surprised of where we're going to be cave diving and what we're going to be filming in February. Oh, boy. Are they going to love that footage? Yeah. It's Oh, my goodness. All right. Scott, thank you for the super chat. Spreading the New Year's wealth. Thank you. Maya, thanks again. For the super chad. I get L here. She hears the crackling. She thinks it's a tree. June as well. Thank oh, you for the God. super chad. Let's see if any other questions. Uh, Come here. Look who's with us today. Pros and cons of helmet rebreathers. Helmet rebreathers. You're oh. talking about that thing that... Yeah, that the guy doing the demo at Dima went to the hospital in? CO2 yeah. issue still a concern. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to I, – I, right now, I don't think they're ready to be used. Happy New Year for yeah. now. No. I love you, baby. Okay, you can lay down. Hello from Texas. Hello from Georgia. Um, how expensive is the average cave diving gear? That's not a thing. I mean, people cave dive in side mount, back mount you know, rebreathers and rebreathers can go from a few thousand dollars to tens of thousands. I mean, it's just impossible to answer that. You know, if you were going to dive what we dive, I'll answer it this way. We dive Sidewinder, which are side mount rebreathers with uh, two computers that are connected to the loop and all the, and, and a dry suit. All of that I'm going to tell you is probably a close to a $20,000 investment with your dry suit and all the gear and lights and everything and the two computers and the sidewinder. 30000 with a DPV and everything oh, else. Oh, with DPV added, yeah, 30. GUE diving courses, they're legit. Great. How would you compare the visibility of a zilt out versus a halo climb? On a halo climb, you can kind of see, kind of. It's like... Blurry. Looking underwater without goggles or yeah. without a mask. Um, you know, you can kind of see on a full silt towel, you can't see anything. And on a halocline transition between going down to the salt and back up to the fresh or vice versa, you can see your dive computer. That part's not going to be blurry. We're on a silt out. You cannot. Um, let's see. 
Do you guys ever smoke before diving? No. No. Do you guys ever smoke after diving? No. No. I don't smoke. I don't, <laughs> we don't smoke. smoke. Period. Um, Tequila shot though, here and there. What about trying the cave? What about trying all that gear from the Chernobyl diver? The Chernobyl diver. Oh the yeah, <laughs> the saran wrap and the and the fish bowl on his head. That's that funny. was cool. You know, on tequila, Gus, I haven't really drinking it much around you. I actually get kind of chatty and talk, talkative. I know usually around you, I'm quiet and shy. But yeah, on tequila, yeah, I'll, I'll open up with you more if we have a couple shots together. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, can we have more Rick's story from experts? Yes, you can. If I oh, can I, get around to recording more. I think by smoke, they mean weed. Uh, oh no! I don't I smoke don't, weed either. I don't. I mean, no judgment, whatever. But no. I know. So I, mean, I think it I should be legal. Totally, total clarity. But I don't smoke it. Um, when you're diving, if you are you uh, known to do that, they will not let you. Connect with Harrison. Did you guys connect with Harrison? Harrison O'Keefe. Thank you, David. We did. When discovering new caves or new sections, this is from David with a super chat. What's the process deciding whether or not it's safe for diving? Is there criteria that needs to be met? Well. Cave discovery or exploration is different than diving known caves. We are not cave explorers. And I would only do that if I was going to do that. I would only do that with very, very experienced explorers, which would be a Mike Young, yep. a Brian Kekuk, an Ed Sorensen. And they have a good feel, but no guarantee of passageways that likely won't collapse. And they actually, Mike was telling me about it. They feel the cave. And if it starts crumbling in their hand, which certain passageways will, they don't go into that, right? Because the walls, if you touch them, are crumbling. So very difficult. This question has come up a couple of times. Who's a better cave diver, Woody or Gus? Woody. No, it's Woody's even, a better cave diver. I mean, we don't do that. That's not Well, a, but I answer. That's was not Woody. that we're both. We, I, here's what I want to answer it. I love cave diving with Gus. What I will tell, I don't know, better, worse, all that. It's not a competition. I know that if I have a problem in the cave, he will get me out and he will be able to take care of me. And I certainly hope he feels the same about me. Of course. Favorite. Uh, this is from Trace. Favorite cave system in Central Florida, Ocala area. Just wanted to say thanks. We're doing a great thing for the community. Thank you so much. Look, I mean, it's hard to beat High Springs and Jenny, where uh, Jenny Springs is, where Peacock is, where Little River is absolutely amazing cave systems but so is mariana which is more on the border close to the uh alabama border of florida also incredible caves there you got jb you got hole in the wall you got twin yeah. caves we're blessed in florida um <clears throat> let's see i i feel like we missed you guys have big plans for the channel this year. Yeah. I mean, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. I just hope that we get to go on bigger and better adventures uh, that we didn't get to go on this year. Hopefully the uh, COVID stuff. Does anybody know what this means? No. <laughs> Hopefully the COVID stuff doesn't mess that up. Do you drink hydrogen peroxide? I don't know. It's edibles. Think about Oh, my God. Blowing. What your recommendation for flying commercial with your rebreather? Just fly commercial with your no rebreather. Problem. Um, do you take your scrubbers or tanks with you? We do. Yeah. Scrubbers. Hey, Ken, Ken I have yeah, a, Ken, bring Mike on for stories. I just did a huge yeah. interview with Mike coming soon. I was in Mexico with him, spent, it's an entire day of interviewing on various journeys that we took throughout a day that is coming. Good question. Are there any prerequisites to get rebreather <laughs> training? You want yeah, to answer this one. there are different agencies have different requirements um, for that. So most of them now are going to be that you are an open water diver. I want to say with at least 100 hours worth of diving and you are don't necessarily have to be a rescue diver, but they do. Most of them want you to have at least a CPR certification. And then you can start on your rebreather training. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, I wonder if Ed teaches cave diving. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, Who yes. certify you guys? Uh, Woody was certified by Brian Kaycock. I was certified by Doug Ebersole. 
Um, let's see. Can you really vomit in the rebreather and you're good? I don't know. I don't know if you can vomit in the rebreather and you're good. I would probably switch to my regulator vomit and then switch back to the rebreather. You, I wouldn't. You don't want to vomit it when you're on the loop. When you're no. on the closed loop, I yeah. no. But you could, if you're on, you like Gus said, you can switch, close that off, put your rag in, and then barf through an open circuit rag, no right. problem. What's your favorite beer? Asking to me. I don't know if I have a favorite beer. I would say that uh, my favorite, um, like beer place is this place in new zealand called the garage project i love the beers from the garage project i got to go there in person i couldn't believe it uh, oh. because i've been a big fan of them but uh i, I saw some yes. bubbling questions we i did it again doug's like all right oh surely now you're gonna bubble i did a 188 foot dive pretty long dive absolutely had deco we had about 30 minutes of deco came out got on the o dive unit do people want to vote? Did I bubble or not bubble? And I'm talking black and white. Did I have any bubbles or no bubbles? Take a guess. And I'll just say, I know what I am. Well, and you know what I, he knows what I am. And we all know that these guys know what they are. No, I did not bubble. Zero. Not a bubble. Zero. Not a, that was like, I. it's like, what? And if he's watching this, he'll chime in. All right, guys. Let's let's try to let's try to focus here. Let's let's tone it down with the whole fish talk and aliens. Um, well, I feel like most of the questions are about aliens and talking to fish, which so let's, are both doable and real. Let's not. No, don't don't feed the fire. Actually, I think I like um, this dialogue. No. Have you ever dived a cave dive to Missouri? No. Best way to start scuba diving. Okay. That's a good question. I this, like that one. This Best, is a good question, too. Go I'll, ahead. I'll start with this one. I like this one. Be, for a lot of you that aren't divers, we have a lot of people who aren't. Best way to sc start scuba diving. Go to your local dive shop. In your community is the best way for a number of reasons. Number one, that way you have a continuing network of people and knowledge base, and it'll keep you involved in diving. And of course, you're going to start diving in confined water. You'll start by doing actually academics. Most of them are on your own these days, digital material, followed by pool work, typically three days of pool work. Then they will schedule you to ultimately go somewhere, probably with them, to finish your open water in open water on a trip that they may have. That's the best way to start. Somebody asked, I'm planning a trip to Florida, Devil's Hole or Blue Grotto? Blue they Grotto. Are, they are completely different. I mean, the Devil's... Do both. I don't know if Easy. they're talking about Devil's Den Devil's, or... Devil's Den. Yeah, Devil's Den or Blue Grotto, then Blue Grotto will be a, a, a better place uh, to but, go. Yeah, but I mean, they're right near each other. You could do one one day and one the next day. They're caverns and they're very mellow. By the way, Blue Grotto now below... 60 feet has changed their status to be a cave that used to be able to go all the way down to the bottom as a cavern, but you can't anymore. You can only go to the 60 foot spot below that. You need to be cave certified. In your previous videos, you said that your lungs are the size of peanuts at a certain depth. Uh, don't you consume very little oxygen then? No, the lungs get the size of peanuts for free divers. When they go all the way down, their lungs will compress. But for divers, you keep breathing the whole time. So they never go to the size of peanuts. That's yeah. just for free divers. Yeah. Have you ever truly scared yourself in a cave? No, not really. Can we put this is what is this member for seven months? Can we play? I just want to read it. Can we play the 30 second Woody game? Sarcastic laugh. Have a good time. Wish you safe diving, Woody, I think, too. Thanks for all the videos and your time. One of the best channels for diving. That really just made my day. I'm pretty sure that's a compliment. And thank you for being an Argonaut. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Have you found any shipwreck treasure? No, we have never found any shipwreck treasure. However, Cheers. I've noticed that there are other... Uh, scuba channels that apparently is super easy for them. They just go down first time and they find hundreds of thousands of dollars. Our good friend Jimmy uh, out of On South Florida, shot. they have the right to a very 
profitable wreck off of North Carolina, and they're finding millions of dollars of gold coins and other gold, gold items on it. Millions, literally. Did they ever raise enough funds to keep the exploration uh, at Roaring River going? I think they hit yes. the, the goal. They yes. did. I am talked to Mike. Gus and I have been invited to go with them on the next one. The permitting is in process. Mike just gave me an update that it looks good, and we will be going. We will be part of the staff where he is going to then try to get to 500 feet there, and we will be there. I don't have a date. But soon. Um, have you ever found anything valuable that you can have sell in cave? No. For some reason, Shark, when we go yeah. diving, we don't find Meg, murder Meg. weapons and oh. police are never called. And Well, Megalodon shark teeth. We found oh, yeah. We do find that. Sweet ones. Um, let's see. Have we ever met Mel Fisher? No. I have not in person, no. Um, right, Brandon. Shark teeth are valuable. I, that's what I just said. I agree. That's and true. Beautiful and we've too. given away a bunch of them. What's your favorite sport besides diving? You know, I, re I would say I will go second diving. And then third favorite sport, I'll go diving. First, second, <laughs> third, I'm going to vote for diving. Dude, they want a serious response. I know that you. Uh, rock climbing. I do enjoy climbing and ice climbing a lot. I don't, I don't do it anymore. But for me, water polo is my favorite sport. Um, let's Kev, see. Can you read Kevro's? Um, Hold on, because I there chat. there were a couple of good questions up here. Okay. Uh, man, there were a couple. I just did a hundred blue grotto without a cave surge. They stopped doing accepting that, by the way. Yeah, there's just, this is a super chat from Kevro. Have you all heard of Adventures with Purpose, a team that looks for missing persons? And yep. Yeah, we've we've uh, we're actually in contact with them. We've tried multiple times to collaborate with them. We just we've never been able to align in terms of schedule and stuff. We we know Jared and Doug and all those guys, and um, you know we're really big fans of of their mission and what they do and bringing closure to families. So um, we will collaborate in the future, hopefully, uh, but we just don't know when. They're really busy. I mean, they travel all over the country doing this stuff. So. Most dangerous and difficult cave system you guys have been to? I mean, I would have to say Eagle's Nest is probably the most dangerous just because it's so deep. I agree. But that cave in Mexico was sketchy. <laughs> uh, what dive watches do you wear or recommend? I don't recommend dive watches. I think you should wear Tarek. a dive computer. Uh, honestly, like a Shearwater Tarek, as you know, he mentioned, I do have... You know, dive watches, I own a couple of them. I enjoy mechanical watches. I like them, but I don't wear them for diving. Rarely, only when I do open circuit. Harry asks, are we going to make a video with Mr. B. Allen or Fallon <sighs> anytime Ballen. soon? Uh, we want to, yes. I hope we, so. We're in communication here and there. We, we, we are um, both agreeing that we want to do it together, and hopefully that will happen in 2022. But... I think in 2022, I just keep, when I close my eyes, I see an explosion ahead for us. You know what I'm talking about? Like a big explosion? Yeah, whatever. Um, F is reminding everyone of the Dive Talk merch. That's right. Thanks, F. -E. Like this shirt. F. Check that out. And Octopus or Alien. Yeah. By the way, this mic so is many, a bit low. So much new saying, evidence. Oh, People have been. Thank you for everybody who's been posting on Facebook all the research showing that, in fact, they are aliens, which I've always known, and uh, we appreciate this. I appreciate that support. I don't know why they keep feeding that. Um, thanks, Heather, member for six months. Good question Argonaut. from Henry, by the way. What happens if you take your CCR loop out of your mouth? It depends. If you just take it out of your mouth while your loop is open, you flood your loop potentially. Well, what's that mean, though, if you flood it? Not good. That's, not good. that's not good. That means your CCR is done. I'm done. And you have to bail out into open circuit and your, your dive is over. And it's, and it's because it goes caustic. Right. Caustic is like having alkaline battery in your mouth. It's going to burn your vocal cords, burn your mouth yeah. because of the sorb. The sorb, you can't drink soda. You can't. 
having your mouth uh, sofa lime wet. I right. mean, it's poison. But if you – there's actually something that happens that you learn in class, um, which is sometimes you develop Burp. some moisture on the loop. And you have to take the loop out of your mouth to clear that moisture on the loop. But you close it first. So you close the loop in order for water not to go into it. And then you clear the moisture, put it back in, open it, and keep breathing and no problem. So if you can take it out, but if you close it first, then no problem. Wow, MMA. Thank you so much for that super chat. And this yeah. really helps this us is your why. do these messages, do these um, various videos. And that's what we use the money for. And thank you. And yes, an octopus really are aliens. Oh Google my God. it. I mean, that's exactly what is going it's on not, with that. We know. I mean, Gus. No, I know. Gus. No, we all know. Yes. Are you guys planning a dive in North Sweden? Wasn't not really, but wasn't really thinking. I love North Sweden. Sweden as a diving destination, but I love it. We can. You know what's funny about Sweden? When I went there, we uh. We stayed in Stockholm, and then we went on a walking tour, and then the tour stopped in front of my hotel, and they told us that the hotel was built on the bank where the Stockholm Syndrome came from. I stayed at the hotel where Stockholm Syndrome was born, and I didn't even know. Wow. <laughs> it's like, why are we stopping at our hotel in this stop of the tour? Thank yeah. you, Andrew, for the super chat. Did you guys know anything about the Mexican cave wars that Jill Heinrich talks about in her book? I'm researching for a book. <clears throat> not enough for me to talk about them intelligently. Gus can answer further. I, I, what was the question? <laughs> I was answering you interrupted me. So you have terrible manners. Mexican cave wars. Oh. You were telling some story about something and nobody cared about. Great. Unrelated to Thank diving. You. Hmm. <sighs> that was horrible for that person because they got no, no answers. Okay. What's your favorite YouTube channel? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I got a few that I watch. I feel like you don't watch anything but Dive Talk, but I, I do watch other YouTube channels. Mine are all on quantum physics. Oh, my God. I watched a whole bunch last night on the, multi, the multiple universe theories. That's from Spider-Man. And also now that black holes are actually not <sighs> gravitational pulls to the point where it goes down to nothing, but actually... Negative energy where when something goes in, it helps it shrink into nothingness. I see the viewer count dropping right it's now. It's a quantum physics talk about discussion this. from my, Albert Einstein. Oh, my God. Oh, you asked me what I like. All right. Um, I like Mark Rover. I watch Mark Rover. I like uh, – some. I don't know. I, I go into this bench. Lockpicking lawyer is cool. Um, Blue World is good. Bikes and Beards. Let's see. What else do we got? Would you mind sharing your scariest moment when cave or wreck diving? Mm. Scariest. You know, I, I've told this before. One time I had when I switched to do a dill flush and i switched to open circuit i had a little water pellet shoot down in my <laughs> throat and it it made me lock up my breathing i couldn't breathe for like 30 seconds it shuts down your breathing and then <laughs> eventually it opens back up that was a little bit alarming somebody's asking about our favorite movie or tv show oh man this is gonna be a random star trek oh my God. i knew it I like The Boys on Amazon Prime. My favorite TV show right now. Can't wait for season three. Um, let's see. How's the scooter training going? We have a video on it. So you should watch it because it's completed. Um, right? There's a DPV video on that on our channel. And it was amazing. Yes. Let's see. What else? Uh, that's a good question. Um, what do your instructor think my friend can get certified with a hearing condition? I do. However, I will always default with this answer. They have to get medical clearance. 
If the doctor signs off on the standard diving medical release form, no problem at all with that. As mm-hmm. long as a doctor says it's fine. Do you have dreams of your dives? That's a good question because I do. I dream of my dives a lot, especially after trips. For weeks, I dream about the dives. Me too. Yeah. Um, have you seen the young kids that mine for gold underwater? Oh, yeah. yeah brutal. I saw that actually in our channel. We actually cover that. Um, which course will you recommend first side mount or advanced nitrox and deco for someone who wants to eventually get cave certified? I don't really know. I mean, I went the rebreather route, so I skip all of that open circuit tech stuff. I would go rebreather if you're considering cave. Hey, that's nice from exotic radio podcast with a super chat. Question uh, for humor. Speedos, Speedos or, or swim, swim shorts? shorts? Bro. I only dive in a full wetsuit, but. I think I would like to see you in some Speedos, maybe, because you don't mind being cold. Well, when I play water polo, I play with Speedos, so that's... I'm going to try to shut my eyes and remove that image immediately from my brain. Well, I mean, okay. back in the day... Let me open them again, and Gus is no longer in a Speedo. Back in the day... Thankfully. It was legit. <laughs> um, let's see. We found diamonds. Would you guys want to collaborate with Jonathan Burt? Sure. But he's, I mean, he's super busy. And he wants to collaborate with us too. But um, he's just, he's, I mean, he's super busy. Although I saw that he's doing a Q&A tomorrow. I'll be tuning in for that. A live stream. He's great. And his work so you guys is should, great. You guys should tune in on that as well. Hey, people want to know what the recording studio looks like. I think you've oh, shown man. that before. It, this is Gus's recording studio. It is well, first it's class. Dive talk. Dive it's, it is dive too. talk, but he he has made it. He is the technology brains behind this. I don't think that. I think they figured that out it's, a while ago. I mean, I, I did just co- give you the reboot solution though. Yeah, and um, it's <laughs> really beautiful. Uh, I got to be honest. It's first class. I can't tell you one piece of name <laughs> of gear that's in here, but the reboot generally is the final answer to everything. <laughs> I dry do love cave dry, exploring. No. Love it. No, I do love dry That's cave no. exploring. I I personally go though with a friend of mine who is a expert in that because it involves climbing and repelling and rope and harness. All horrible things. What's the max amount of time you have decode? Um, I think fifty something minutes, so like an hour or so. Over maybe close to an hour and a half for me. That was in the Caymans on some very long hundred meter dives. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, if you lose your goggles, I guess your mask, that's what you mean. Can you just open your eyes? Well, it depends. I, I guess, mean, but what for? Do you have another mask? Just switch it. Switch off to it. Yeah, certainly. When you're tech diving, we have another mask. We do do a skill, though, in your open water class that if you lose your mask, at that point, you really are relying on your buddy, and your buddy either has to help you go get the mask and put it back on, which you learn to put a mask back on underwater and clear it, or take you to the surface safely. Have you guys ever used a full heavy metal helmet and suit for diving? You mean like those old school, you know? No. Uh, what are your thoughts on diving when taking anti-anxiety medications? I'm not a doctor, doctor. so I have no idea. Doctor. Gus, do you play OSRS? No idea what that is, so no. Um, how old were you when you started diving? I was uh, 11. 35. 11. Um, let's see. Who do you reach out to when you get permission to go into a cave that has been closed? Well, I don't, I mean, that's local government. I guess so. Right. But we don't, we don't go into caves that are closed, although we are getting ready to do quite the exhibition with Mike Young. I'll just leave it at that. Do you guys recommend the Kiss Classic? Well, a lot of people like it. It's very robust. And it's good for cold water, right? Yeah. It's hardy and robust, but it's big, everybody. So you're talking about a big, heavy unit. And I would say it's more suitable for big open water diving than cave diving. But I would honestly recommend the Kiss Spirit over the classic these days. 
Um, great white and canners. No, I wish. Mm -hmm. I wish. What do you guys think about DIR diving, like GUE diving and, and stuff like that? I think they're awesome. Uh, pizza or pasta? Yes. Mm. Yes. What do you do when you're on deco? Depending on where the deco is. Sing. And when <laughs> yes. I do, they, they try to sing along with me. What camera do you use to record deep underwater in a cave? This one right here. It's a Sony FDRX3000. And I use Pretty a, good. I use a Paralens. Um, need card decals and stickers on the merch. There is some stickers on the merch. You guys can get it. A lot of you have come up to me if I'm at places, say hi and so forth. Or somebody recently messaged me though that they saw me in Cozumel, but they felt awkward to come up to me, so it didn't bother me. I was with Mike Young. Absolutely, man. I want you to Stop. come up. We yeah. hug. We'll do pictures. We can high five. I probably have stickers I can give you. I mean, it's an honor. I feel so privileged when you come up to me. By the way, those of you who are Argonauts, I promise you I'm going to send you some swag. I just haven't done it. I know I collected your addresses and stuff. I just haven't done it. And typically, Woody is the one who ships them out. I haven't given him the envelopes and stuff, but I need to do that. Um, yeah, so want to. I, I've been slacking on that. Yes, I have. We ha I've been to Truck Lagoon. You're calling it Truck Island. It's amazing. It's a tech diver's paradise of 80-plus shipwrecks from when the U.S. retaliated against the Jama Japan for Pearl Harbor. And it is a long way, but fantastic. Recommend rebreather on that. How do I get trained by Gus? Well, it all depends on, on what. Like, I'm an instructor, but I, I don't teach rebreathers, for example. I don't teach cave diving. Um, if you want to learn how to scuba, just reach out to Sea Ventures. Um, and, um, you know, sign up for our class. So cventures.com is the website. We're doing one, everybody. Gus and I are doing a joint class. What's the day? Next weekend, right? Next weekend. 14th? Not, yeah, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Still room in the class. Reach out to Sea Ventures if you want to get certified with Gus and I teaching that class together, which doesn't happen often. Actually, the first time we've ever done it, right? Together. Yes. Dream dive spot. Man, that's a hard one. Dream dive spot. It would have to be Indian Springs for me. <sighs> Indian Springs, which is that we did a video about this, said the most beautiful cave in Florida. That has to be. Um, I'll go me. cave diving. I'll have to go with the crystal caves. That Brian Kekok leads in the Abacos and then Ocean. I still am always going to have to mention Indonesia. I'm working. This is a BK club, a super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Facing my biggest fear of the ocean and becoming a certified diver. Good for you. Ever consider diving floated mines? Yes. Love to do that. What are good backup cave lights? Um, I use the D710. The Orca Torch D710 is my backup. John, how often do I teach CCR? I do it based on scheduling. I don't want more than one or two students at a time. So it's not like I have them pre-scheduled. I schedule them when I have people that want to take it with me. I do have a couple that is now interested. So if you reach out to me through C Ventures, then we just schedule it because I really like them one-on-one. -on -one. Patrick, who super chatted here earlier, just recently did one with me. You should get Neil deGrasse Tyson on here. Yeah, okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> it's like, I love it because sometimes, you know, people say, oh, you guys should get this guy or that guy. I We would love to. Like, I, I would love to dive with Will Smith. We would love to have Donald Cerrone in here. We, we said, you know, we would love to have him. Uh, somebody said Burke Kreischer. Um, yeah, of course. But, yeah, they're not going to come on the show. I mean, we would love to, but I don't think that's going to happen. Have you ever skydived? Yes, a few times. I'm also a pilot, a private pilot. I did complete that years ago. Divers seem to like also flying, it seems like. Neil deGrasse Tyson would be amazing. I would love to. People keep saying we can get Donald. We have not had success. 
We're yeah. saying it again. We would love to have him on the show, mainly to talk about diving, not to disrespect him. No, of course not. Have what you ever been spearfishing? We love no. spearing lionfish. Yeah. And we've done a lot of it. Uh, recently, I just did a bunch of it in Cozumel last week. Uh, this question has come up several times. So I'll just answer it so it doesn't keep coming up. What's your favorite video game? I mean, I feel like I'm going to disappoint everyone, but I don't really play video games. Um, I play uh, games on my phone, like Solitaire or whatever, but I don't have a video game that I play. Uh, I like Pac-Man and Asteroids, if they're wow. still around. Back and, in the uh, day. Pinball. Is that are those still things? No, like I'll play like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. I don't know what it but is. that's back in the day. Oh. Mars Not Scuba, today. thank you. Just want to show some love and support and dive with Donald chat. Trump. Okay, yeah, good luck with that. You know, we debated this. I debated it's like if 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 the president of the United States was a cave diver, would they let him keep cave diving? We I had this whole it. conversation about this. Yeah. We were like, no way. And he's like, well, but he's the person. He can do whatever he wants. It's like, no, he can't do whatever he wants. And we had like a whole debate about this. It's like, well, we should have recorded that because it was another ridiculous debate. And I feel like we should have it because, you know, it will have 5,000 comments on YouTube of people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm an expert in presidential activities. <laughs> and uh, people, <laughs> people will call me an idiot and, you know, well, par for the course. Um, let's see. Deepest you've ever been, 248 feet. They aren't even allowed to drive, but they, they can go and do stuff. Like I know uh, President Obama went to that, what is it? He did that hike in Hawaii. He went to the top the top of that whatever cliff or whatever. It's, it's like a famous thing in Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii, so I don't know. But uh, see what I'm saying? Like this is a good debate. We should have this debate because I say – that if I'm the president, there's no way you can stop me from cave diving. I'm the president. I can do whatever I want. I don't know about that. If you're given the whatever. opportunity, would you consider the other direction up into space? That Absolutely tomorrow. I NASA, if you're listening, NASA, I'm so, sign me up. NASA is not watching this. I'll, I'll come there. I will discuss my alien... Relative, whatever you need. If you need more information about these guys, maybe I could contribute something to NASA on that com subject. Somebody asked if I still have the Atom. No, I don't have the Ariel Atom anymore. Sold it last year. Uh, Favorite open water dive in Florida? I still love Jupiter, West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, drift diving. I love drift diving. I love the sharks. There's a lot of sharks there and all the wrecks. So that is a great area if you like drift diving and big animal encounters for open water. Let's see. Does the tape... Cave diving community is tight knit as it seems everyone seems to know each other. It's it's a it's a tight group of people that yes, eventually you do get to know each other in terms of tight as in like buddies and all friendly and warm to each other. I I I would like to think we're helping make that warmer for the cave dive community. <laughs> then it, it should be warmer to each other. All right. Um, Thanks, Jack, for the this, super chat. This guy is saying, uh, has either of you dove the USS Oriskany? Yeah, both of us. Yes, amazing. Awesome. awesome. We want to do it on our DPVs, though, uh, so we're going to go awesome. back because it can have some high current, and swimming it can be difficult. Any cave diving goals for 2022? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We and have a big one coming We're up. close. We're close of making that goal happen. Yeah, there's a big one. Hopefully, we both get to announce it in 2022. We're both going for a particular award, and I, th I think we're going to get it in 2022. I hope. Well, I was just thinking about a place that a we're place? going. A place? Okay. Yeah, that also is happening for sure. I left a message on Cowboy's YouTube. We'll see if he gets it. Thanks. Yeah, he's not. I he's wish you would. 
He's not gonna come on I the show. Will. I think he will. I think I hope he does. Larry's well. saying Gus, aliens are real. Who? Nobody's saying that there's no aliens out there. There are out there. They're just not at the bottom of the ocean. No, they usually don't stay in on Malta the bottom. or whatever. They usually stay under nooks and crannies. Not necessarily. Well, That's, li- they actually are see, a lot of this times is on where the bottom. It depends. Yeah. You know, I. <laughs> I you can't say this and night. then be like NASA if you're watching. I want to like well, NASA they know, they is know. not watching this. I'm contributing techno data bubble right nonsense. Now. I'm giving them scientific information. Oh right my now. god! There's a way to talk. I don't them. think that word means what you think it means. Yes, not all. Yes, cephalopods are aliens, but in particular, octopus are the ones that you know are clearly from not here. That, all right, they're great though. Have you been diving on Spiegel Grove? <laughs> many, 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 many times. We, we're laughing because that's where we take our open water divers. That's a standard trip for us in Key Largo, where we actually drive all the way from Atlanta to the Keys on our scuba bus. And the final dive of a long weekend on Sunday is the Spiegel Grove. It's, a, it's fantastic, by the way. A great wreck. Bottom is about 130. Super cool. How help. do you know they're not at the bottom of the ocean? Ryan is asking. What? Aliens. I, I, I don't know. I, because it's in the Bible, Ryan. I, you should I read mean, the octopus Bible. are, so I, they are. I mean, I'm um, agreeing with Ryan. What new dive technology are you looking forward to in the future? Oh, I have one. If you okay. can go first, but I certainly have one. Oh, uh, no, I want to hear yours. Mine is a discussion that we've recently had with Shearwater and... Through O dive as a starting point, having real time information while you're wearing your computer telling you exactly what's going on with your heartbeat, with your bubbling, with your tissue saturation in real time. Rather than just an algorithm, it's really measuring you while you're diving. That would be incredible and can really change deco profiles on the fly. That would be cool. Uh, what's your favorite sheer water computer? The Perdix for me. All right. Whale sharks, yeah, amazing. But um, a lot of times, if you're diving near them or on the surface near them, they just they go away. So if you go whale shark diving, sometimes they'll just want you to snorkel. They'll tend to stick around. Favorite animal you swim with or near? You know, until recently, I would say... Now, I'm still going to say the octopus. The octopus is my favorite so far. But, man, I was super impressed with the uh, manatee that we saw at Jimmy. Mm. And I, that was cool. I do still love... I, my, I think the most... It's hard for me to say favorite. The most graceful animal. The one that I just love watching in the water the most is an eagle ray, even more than a manta ray, that pointed beak. And the way that eagle rays just rip through the current, like you're struggling to even move, and they just gracefully glide by. It's just something really beautiful about that. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Brian from Off Grid Backcountry Adventures, especially because his truck is broken. Again, Brian, come on, man. Like, let's get a four Raptor or something. (laughs) <laughs> that doesn't break every weekend. He has he has like an 87 Toyota Tundra that is like, it's enough, Brian. Like, let's get something that we can count on because we want to, you know, get out, get out there uh, and get after it. So uh, shout out to Brian and for everyone. Check out his channel, Off Grid Backcountry Adventures. This guy is out there, dude, in the middle of nowhere. He's awesome. Yeah. And he's like, I want to give him, you know, Brian, you have to get like a good knife, by the way. Like a lot of people call me out for the M18, this thing. They're like, oh, man, Gus must know about knives because not a whole lot of people has a TM Hunt M18. And when I watch Brian, I realize that I clearly don't know what I'm doing because I have an M18 and he has like a $5 knife from Home Depot. And he's out like in the middle of nowhere, clearly doing way more than me. I wonder if that somehow correlates to his broken tundra. <laughs> Just saying, there's a pattern. Could be. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's, man. We got to get him. Uh, oh, it's a 2005 custom-built broken Tacoma. 
Not a <laughs> not a custom built broken. Custom built broken Tacoma. Great. I added the broken, but that is a great truck. Well, yeah. But you're awesome. We're playing with you because you're awesome. Yeah, man. Check it out. Don't get a Chevy, though. People who are saying get a Chevy, just stop with the bad advice. Um, <laughs> He's going to stab himself in the heart. Yeah, thank you for watching that show. Whoever, uh, whoever agree with me, which I know it hasn't been a whole lot of people. You guys like cold water diving? Not really. I prefer warm water diving, but I am um I have done quite a bit of cold water diving, strangely enough. But um define cold, like I think seventy two in the Florida caves is cold, so it's all relative. Dive talk got me about making a stiff Irwin joke. That's too soon for the people that were like, Oh, you stiff Irwin yourself. That's come on, man. Mm -mm. It's a crocodile hunter. That's never gonna be okay. Nope, he's, he's a, he was such a good guy. Um, let's see. We out, we upload twice a week right Pyro. now, which I think is um yeah that's enough some, a pace that we we feel like we can keep up with. That's enough. Uh, Pyro has asked a couple times, how much did your setup cost? I'm not sure what you mean by setup. What setup? Like the camera setup or the scuba probably, setup? I'm not really sure. The cave diving rig and yeah. setup. I guess that. Yeah, you can clarify your question. I would love to go diving with Mr. B. Allen. Love to. Absolutely yeah. would be an honor. Any big projects you're working on other yes. than reaction videos? I love the videos of your dives as well as the reaction stuff. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, short answer, short answer is yes. I don't want to disclose what is it that is on the pipeline, but... Um, you know, one of the big things we want to work on is original videos, and we do have a few of those in the pipeline. But in order to record them, we have to travel, and uh, in order to travel, we have to find time in our calendars, and that's just tough. I, I just did a big interview session with Mike Young. It was an all-day adventure I shared with him, and we will be putting that together soon for airing. It may have actually have to be aired in a part one, two, and maybe three. Let's see. What else? Oh, my God. Stop it with the aliens and the octopus stuff. But people, it's... How about you? we talk about knives? Here's another knife. Check this out. Isn't that awesome? Just, just so they can talk about something else. That's a Bush XL. Yeah, saturation divers would be an interesting interview. Uh, that's a really uh, good suggestion. I would love to interview some commercial sat divers. Well, I, yeah, that would be very, very cool, especially if they have any video of their dives. <laughs> that's a real heart stabber. <laughs> Neff said. Uh, Close Calls, amazing book. Read it. Awesome, 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 awesome stories. All right. You guys hiring? No, um, we're not hiring anyone. We don't really have any particular role. Yeah, well, what skills you have? <clears throat> hey, let's just ask. We, we, don't, we, don't, we never know. I don't have any really skills in life. Other than nothing in particular. See, Robin said her favorite video was when I pulled the knife out. That's <laughs> memorable. Memorable. Um, any future plans for diving in Europe? I, I do want to go to Europe. Uh, there's a place specifically in Europe that we want to go to. I just haven't. Uh, we haven't made it happen. So um, hopefully we can make it happen later this year. Yeah. Let's see. Um, what, what what is, is sat saturation? diving? Just know. so everybody knows, that's what we do in general is what's called bounce diving. We go down and all there are 16 tissue compartments in your body. We don't fully absorb nitrogen to where those tissues are full, have absorbed as much nitrogen as they can in all 16 compartments. We don't do that. 
sat divers do. They can't take any more nitrogen. They're fully saturated. doesn't matter if they stay down longer. It's not going to increase any more their deco time. So they're fully saturated and they come up like for like a week, <laughs> you know. So they're down at, you know, doing oil rig work and stuff like that for hours and hours at a time. And they come up in habitats and stay down there for like a week at a time. Yeah, well, they are pressurized. They spend a month basically uh, pressurized. So they work for three weeks and then they spend a week coming up. Coming up, slowly yeah. coming up. Uh, where and when was your favorite dive together? I'm trying to think. What what was our favorite dive? Oh, well, we've had some fun. I feel like we've come in out and I'm like, that was my favorite dive. All the time we're like, this was so that was, epic. Can't wait. I would say the dive with Mike in Cozumel under that pier was probably my favorite dive that Funniest. we've ever done. Laughing. That was my, it was so it was awesome. awesome. Yeah, that was a great one. Well, yeah. I don't know. A lot of cave diving we've done together. Uh, we had some great lion. F I, I'm going to go to that Chevron oil rig where we slaughtered the more lion fish than we've ever killed before together. That was up there. You remember that one? Yeah, that was that was crazy. What about diving in the UK, or is it too cold for you? No, we. I mean, I I dove in um, Iceland. Um, it's just there's so much stuff to see with what is warmer. And uh, from what I hear, the UK doesn't have great visibility. So what's the point of going to cold water with bad visibility where you can have great visibility with warm water? Thank you, Larry, for the compliment of watching our videos. And I'm glad it's encouraging you to want to do more and cave dive. But always going to get you to train. Gus, if you're not teaching a course, do you ever dive without Woody? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I said that with too much enthusiasm. I should have said yes sometimes. <laughs> you guys ever dive with full face mask? Not me. I know yes. Woody does at the aquarium. Um, Speaking of knives, the Croatian diver stabbed himself, Gus. It's obvious. Oh, that's a Gus got that knife ongoing the conversation. Fish. That's for sure. I have this one, too. Let me show you this one. This is a Griffin X. Check that one. Awesome. I love these. They're awesome. I wish you would be as equally excited about those little things I just gave you. Can you take one of those out? Oh yeah. I don't I I think I already lost them. I mean Um, let's see. What else? I think I already lost them. That's <laughs> funny that figurine you got me, I dropped it and it's broke. <laughs> I really miss it. It's Eagle's Nest and Vortex Springs still being explored. Um, yeah, actually, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. somebody, I believe, or found an entrance, a new entrance to Eagle's Nest recently. And I think they won an award earlier this year for that. Um, dive machete. No, it's not a machete. It's a knife. I don't really get the whole knife thing. I respect it and all, but, you know, you're... A little too enthusiastic about those holding those giant knives. Like they're something awesome. Going, something going on that we need to know about? No, they're just they're just cool. Uh, let's see. The knife is <laughs> Who for is the Richard, aliens. Gus or Woody? I don't. I don't think there's a question. Not, uh, not even, not even will you guys it. dive the Baltic Sea anomaly? Why? Right. Sure, but why? There's just. He's just going to be talking about aliens and all alternate whatever galaxies and all these other nonsense. Universes, not galaxies. They're two different things. Yeah. And yes, they are alternate simultaneity. Are you a gun other. guy or just the knives? He's actually, tough. let me show you. Let me show you the. Uh, this is actually my favorite knife. Just I pulled this one for you. Just wait, just so you can see. This is my favorite. You cannot buy this knife. They don't make them. Uh, well, I mean, you out. cannot buy any of the other ones either. Look at this. I mean, dude. Wow. This is awesome. This is for real my that favorite. Would be, knife. That probably was handy in the year 1200. No, no, no. This is this no, is it, just uh, it's art. It's art. It's, a, it's I mean, I feel like I feel like this I I could like actually display it somewhere. I've had this knife for like 7 years, I think. I don't know how long. It's just perfection. Can you show the little cookies I gave you? I, clip I them lost them already. So beautiful. You just push it and it goes on the line. Oh, my God. I gave you I like mean, just seven look at, of them. Just look at the orange. It's a beautiful gift, I thought. 
I mean, it's just, uh, it's just. Uh, I just want to be neutral and not hurt anything in the world. Mm. And you want to stab apparently something with big, just, big knives. I don't, I'm just saying that's what I probably you do. I don't know what's going on. You're mad or angry or aren't they all right? People, uh, people uh, ask, you know, why I don't do a, a, a tour of the, of the studio. Because then you get to see all of these stuff that is all over the place. I'm and surrounded then, by you know, like and then weapons. people are like, this is, you know. There's a gun safe where my camera is mounted on. So yeah. it's, I feel very like Fort Knoxy down here. What are we doing? Uh, but yeah. Do you have any custom Damascus blades? I do. Just can't show it on camera right now. Um, let's see. Gus seems like a stoner to me. Okay. <laughs> Opposite. Um, he has 50 million knives. No, I don't have 50 million knives. I really don't know how many I have, which is, which is, sounds bad when I say it. Is this blade talk or dive talk? I should, I should start knife talk. Sounds, sounds badass. Knife talk. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, we definitely, again, Mr. Balin on our show would be amazing. Love to talk to him about his Navy SEAL days and more. Oh, yeah. Just in general, you know, about his career and building up YouTube and how he got into it and why he's so popular. It would be fascinating to speak with him. See, I thought for a while, I thought Brian and I, like, were seeing eye to eye or something. But then he comes in and makes this comment. He says, Woody, there's an alien lookout platform in South Colorado. It's kind of hokey, but fun to check it out. Very fun to check it out. You've been there? No, but we're going to go there. Oh, my God. Maybe we can go with him when his truck this is fixed. Is... I think we should go. No, I hope. Wow. I wonder what they've seen. That's. <sighs> I know I've seen. Plenty of them. The dog. I need more knives. Okay. Uh, oh, I found the cookie. There it is. Oh. I didn't lose it. You mean the gift that I just gave you? Yes. Thank you. Hold that up a little bit more and squeeze it and That's... show people. Look at what I gave them. I mean, unbelievable. That's a work of art. Almost as useful as a knife. Let's see. Uh, will you guys be making practical videos in the futures, like your host reparation and the spare air test? You know, we mm. maybe. Um, you know, the 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 thing is, we want to use our time wisely. When when we get together and record videos, like today, we recorded four reaction videos or or four videos. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that there are videos that you guys want to watch. There are videos sometimes that we want to record, but we know that only like 10 people want to see them and we'd rather we spend time giving you what you guys want to watch so yeah i want to i mean i would love to record a video talking about advanced night trucks or whatever but i know that only like 100 people want to see that so i want to be able to use my time wisely and give people what they want so those videos like the hose repair or whatever it was an experiment we're like let's go and shoot this and see if people want to watch more of this stuff and then we realize that they get 10% of the views that the other videos will get. So really, at the end of the day, we'll record the content that you guys want to watch. And the way you can tell us if you want to watch it is by watching videos, right? So um, the more you watch the videos, the more you share them out there, the more you... I know there's, you know, I've seen people sharing some of the videos they really enjoy on Reddit, for example, and then they take off and they get like 20,000 more views or whatever. Uh, the more it tells us what kind of content you want, and then we go and record it. We don't mind. We'll talk about whatever. We just want to use our time wisely. So, um, Pyro, a lot of people have, though, said more cave diving videos. Yeah. And we do have a, we, a bunch of that is coming up over the next couple of months. Without being specific, oh, we man. both are going to be together cave diving in some epic places over the next couple of months. You'll see that. Oh, man. Somebody said we need a paranormal diving episode. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to do that since paranormal stuff is fake. So I don't. What? I don't. I just don't know how to do it. Wait. 
How do you Did do you that? you say it is fake? Right. You don't think there's ghosts and spirits? Right. Well, there are. Okay. Sure. Paranoia. 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 That's... Par- you are paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> Annoia. No. That's it's real. No. No, he's not. I mean, just to give you guys an idea, like one of my personal heroes is James Randi. And if you know who James Randi is, you already kind of know who I am or how I am. And if you don't know, you can research. Uh, But yeah, no. Paranormal diving, that's just not a thing. Uh, Let's see. Audio levels just dropped. You guys just got quieter. And just crank up the volume. Oh, Let's we go were to just, eleven. We're just re- I'm, re- I'm, I'm. There's a lot of comments, so, so mm. I'm quiet trying to read. There's so many flying by. Um, Kurt loves J- James Randy. Me too. Yeah, He's people awesome. do ask that. Why can't you find the Eagle Nest videos? Eagle's Nest. You really should be pretty experienced cave diver before you go in Eagle's Nest. So, yeah, you need you need you need to be very experienced to go in there. Not only that, but Eagle's Nest is a deep cave, and most of the rigs to record have a depth limit of two hundred feet, and the Eagle's Nest cave starts around one hundred and eighty feet, so it starts pretty deep. So you can go really far into the cave before you hit two hundred, and yeah, I can risk it. I can risk taking this camera past the 200 feet, but if it breaks, who's going to buy me a new camera? I kind Not of, me. I kind of love this one. One type of video I like to see, though, is a cave overview. I like this, where you show the map of the cave and then clips of the interesting restrictions, cool rooms, etc. We are definitely doing that in the most beautiful caves in the world in February. Like, beyond gorgeous. I've been to them. Gus hasn't, and it's mind-boggling. We will be putting those kind of videos together from the briefing to the actual dives. Oh, my God. I don't don't even want to get into Yuri Geller. Um, But somebody asked a really good question, which was, can people with disabilities dive? Yes. I um, am an instructor under SSI called Classified Diving. It's for people with um, varying degrees of abilities and... We can get you varying different degrees of certification. It's a very rewarding uh, thing to do, both for the instructor and the student. Yep. Woody, when are you taking Gus dry caving? (laughs) Good luck with that one. Soon. Uh, What is more difficult, lower orange grove or eagle's nest? I would say lower orange grove just because it's tighter. Uh, Eagle's nest is massive. It depends on what parts of eagle's nest. Yeah, I mean, it's so big that there are certainly some sections there that are probably more difficult. Uh, what do you do if you have to go to the bathroom? I mean, depending on what you need to go for and what you're wearing. Uh, Woody offers IT assistant. Goes, Gus blows him off. Wow. That's and, a little delay reaction on the comment. but And it worked. The funny part, Lisa, is that my IT assistants worked. I went back to the old school, unplug and replug, right. and then we now can see the video. Thank you for the ten dollar super chat, by the way. Really appreciate that. How's is that Houseman? Thank you. Yeah, Houseman. Have you ever had something in a cave like a big catfish or something scare the crap out of you? A chupacabra was one time we no, that we didn't see anything that scare us, but there is some. Um, Catfish in caves sometimes, so they're they're small, little, yeah, creatures with no eyes and stuff. Thank you for the super chat, Immortal 009. Marty's saying he's being avoided. I'm not sure what question you ask. I guess I missed it. We're not really avoiding anyone. Hey, feel free to send those uh, Immortal, the ones where there's some no mount diving videos from Germany. I would would be interested in taking a look at those <laughs> what is the most challenging cave that you've ever dived in mm, i don't know different parts of the caves are challenging so um 
I mean, getting in the ear at Jenny Springs is a real challenge because of the flow. Jug, how about jug, that little tight restriction we had to get through. We had to yeah. kind of curve our body. Recently, for me, a section of Twin Cave, a restriction that was very, very tight, presented some significant challenge. That was that was tough. I watched, I saw the video on that. By the way, um, those of you who are not members, really, really, really consider becoming a member of the channel. If you go into our channel on YouTube, there is a, a button there that allows you to join as a member. Membership start really, really low, $3 a month. Uh, it just help us travel and record original content, which is what we want to do, like cave dives, for example. And we will be posting a bunch of original videos, actual cave dives that uh, Woody went into. I'm going to be releasing it as members only content. So one of the dives is coming next week for everyone. Everyone will have access to it. But I think I have like five or six different dives that I will be releasing just as members only. So you can catch that if you become a member. Also, somebody asked a really good question, which was, will you consider a meet and greet? We're actually doing a meetup later this year at the end of April. I think it's April 28th to May 2nd. The meetup is completely sold out. But one thing I wanted to announce or pre-announce is that we actually found another boat. So we're actually adding, I believe, 12 more spots for the meetup, but we will only open those spots to the people that are on the wait list who are still members. So we're going to give members priority to come to the meetup. So if you're interested in coming and spending like four, four days with us uh, in a few months and dive with us, especially because we'll be diving there and Mike Young will be there. Doug Ebersole will be there. We'll be there. Um, you know, and we're going to do try rebreather sessions and we'll pool. do try rebreather. Yeah. Try so our rebreathers you'll be pool. able to dive without rebreathers. Lovely and immortal became toe dippers. We just became members. And Thank we you so much. You. Yes. And Lisa super chat. Can you do a dive video in the blue hole in Belize? <laughs> sure. Yes. See we if will. we can find some bodies down there. We'll bring just one light though. Like those divers there. Um, let's see. Is Trimix going away in recreational diving? The opposite. I think Trimix is becoming more popular. I think, it, you know, helium is getting harder to find, but some agencies like Raid, for example, are recommending that you add helium if you go deeper than 100 feet. It's great. It really helium is. Helium is awesome. Proving to be beneficial in a lot of ways, not just clarity, but, but the bubbling as well. So they're doing more and more studies on that through O-Dive. Do you talk to Mike <laughs> Young about adding hydrogen to the dive? Um, oh, my God. No. That's not a thing that I know of that's happening anytime soon. Very unstable gas. Have you ever been narked? Yes, really narked. Really narked, yes. Uh, so. Mine was in the Great Lakes. We were pretty deep. It was cold, and I was so narked. It was like spinning dizzy, and I just had to come up. I was pretty. I was really narked. That wasn't that long ago. Um, yeah, it was not a good feeling, that particular one. <laughs> Aliens or Predators franchise. Do you guys have the craziest questions? Um, Blue Water in Alabama quit doing Trimix. I don't know why. Dave, I live off Lake Michigan. Boy, you guys are hardcore divers. I was in dry suit, dry Sweet gloves, jet. and the... Rex were magnificent. They're preserved. There are zebra mussels everywhere on them now, but it makes the water clear. But it's cold. And because it's so cold, there's just a lot of gearing up. And um, it's just hardcore. It's really hardcore diving in the Great Lakes. Yep. Who does the editing for your channel? I do. Yes. Great job, too. Hard um, work. Let's see. You guys need to get piloting license together and Cessna to fly to the dive spots. We actually both kind of did our own fly training separately. Woody did it years ago, and I did it, like, I think 2019, something like that. Yeah. It's expensive, so yeah. honestly, it doesn't make sense economically. It, it certainly is fun. So...
let's see. Really? All right, so we're gonna go for 13 more minutes. We'll end the stream right at 3 p.m. Yep. So if you have any more questions that are not about aliens or octopus, please ask. This is your time to shine. Have either of you ever dived the Mariana Trench? I don't even know where that is. So no. I've been to Mariana, Florida. That's cool. <laughs> no, it's really deep. And no, we're, we're not. We haven't dove that level of depth. What does Woody think? Think of Drago's impression, Scott. They're, they're hilarious. If Drago's watching, this is Drago. He works at our shop and he likes to do an impression of me trying to sell people rebreathers. It's quite <laughs> funny. He knows just enough of the terminology to be dangerous and he mixes it all up for some reason in like an aggressive New York salesman accent. It's funny. Do you have any other hobbies? Wow, lovely. No. Not really. What yeah, a generous lovely. super chat. Thank Gus, you. have you ever had to go through a restriction where you became stuck and what's your scariest dive? Yeah, you you, you do kind talk of. about that a lot. You were I was kind of stuck, stuck uh at Jock Hole and we have that on video. It's on the video of Yeah, I guess Jock Hole. It's if you look at the thumbnails, it's within the last two months and it says stuck. And it has a picture of me stuck. And you got through it. You had to dig a little, but yeah. He stayed calm and got through it. Have you ever run into totally unprepared people in a cave dive? No. Every time I run into people, they are cave divers and they're prepared. Yes, I do have meaning for pink. I get asked that question a lot. If you message me or email me, I will send it. I've posted it before and I do have meaning for it. Um, send me an email. Info at divetalk.com, and I will give you a very specific answer. Yep, people have been to the bottom of the trench, that's right, on submarines, obviously. Yeah, it's six or seven miles deep. I, um, so, just not for diving. My main worry in a cave is other people. Um, I'm not worried at all, actually, about other people in a cave. Um, no are you worried about other people in a cave? No, no. I no? mean, no issues. There's certain protocols about people that are exiting the cave. If you're entering the cave, we move over. The exiting diver always has the right of way. But for the most part, cave divers are pretty respectful to each other and follow the right protocols. What is the deepest you will ever attempt to dive? Will you bring us with you and where? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I want to dive the Britannic, who, which is a wreck in Greece. It's the sister ship to the Titanic, an exact replica of it. And um, I believe the wreck goes down to around 400 feet. So it starts around 300 and it goes all the way down to 400 and something. I would love to dive that wreck, but um, I don't really have a limit. There's a, there's a comment from Dave. No, they haven't rescued someone. I have rescued more than one person. One in particular that was difficult and scary, but I, I have had to do that, and it's um, interesting. Only in open water, never in a cave. How did you two get into diving? Julia asked that question. For me, it was uh, just finding my 11-year-old, finding my friend's dad scuba gear in the garage and we jumped in the pool with it we got caught and he encouraged us to get certified after that i was going to iceland and i googled things to do in iceland and number one was scuba dive so i drove to my local dive shop and signed up for a class and i went diving in iceland and i got hooked and it was awesome have we ever dove Lake Jacassi often? I've taught dry suit classes there. Yep. And it is a local drive and dive spot for us where we'll do um, various trips, typically for some class that we're teaching. How much time do you take to turn to cave diving certified, assuming that you're cavern certified? It's impossible to talk about time because it's all about skills and how many dives do you have. Depending on the agency, they will tell you you have to have this many dives. Um, you know, in order to advance when it comes to cave diving. Yeah, and Gus is right. Your instructor is certainly going to 
evaluate you and determine where if you're ready for the next steps of cave diving. You're, it's it's hard, it, but it's great class. Yeah. I watched the video where Ed told Woody his 2012 story of a rescue. Would either of you consider trying to follow in Ed's footsteps as a rescue cave diver? Nope. I think that is a whole nope. other level. And to me, you need to be living in a cave area where you're diving those caves pretty much every day. And it's a whole other level of experience beyond that which we will obtain. I, I I don't think we will ever be doing that. That's my opinion. Yeah, it's a whole nother level. There are much more qualified people to do it, and uh, some of those are certainly cave instructor level, and they live in the cave areas. By the way, I do want to say that sometimes, you know, when I watch those videos of Ed and looking back or whatever – Sometimes we may make it sound like Ed is the only one in the world doing this kind of work, and that's not the case. There's a lot of people that do rescue work and uh, body recovery work and all of that. I think that Ed is the best. I think he's the greatest of all time doing that stuff. But, like, for example, when they went to Dominican Republic, there were already other people that had attempted to recover those bodies. They just couldn't do it. So they thought it was impossible. They said, let's just seal the cave. But Ed wanted to give it a shot and they said let's let ed give it a shot and if they can do it we're gonna seal the cave and ed was able to do it so i think he's the greatest but it doesn't mean that nobody else out there is able to do it so when ed decides that he can't do it anymore or whatever there will be other people that will be able to do it maybe not as great as ed perhaps um but um you know th there are great people out there that can do this i don't want to make it sound like no one else will be able to do this after ed stops doing it marty says he's looking to move to mariana just for more convenient diving and you certainly That'll probably awesome. already do know of course of cave adventurers that's ed's shop and they're great for everything any female diver interviews coming up we've done several actually we've yeah. we interviewed jill heinerth who uh, i hope you watch that and on the podcast we interviewed georgia hauserman who i don't think we have a video of that uh, on YouTube, but check out the podcast. Go to divetalkmedia.com, and we did a whole episode with Georgia. It was like over an hour long. We are going to do a reaction about the Thai rescue that will be What's incredible that? with somebody very involved with the Thai rescue. It's there was a rescue very, in Thailand? It's going to be very cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Thank you, Lisa, Lisa for, for becoming, becoming a, a Toe Dipper member. We appreciate it. You're going to get some cool content. Again, we have some really neat content that we released to, or are releasing more and more up to the members only. I don't use any noisemaker underwater. I used to. Um, but you know, I, I bought it mainly for students or whatever to get their attention. And I mean, I was going to break it and they never paid attention, honestly. So I was like, yeah, forget it. I just bank stuff on my tank. Wow. Heather, glad you finally caught us live. Awesome. First time you got five minutes. Hey, Pyro, <laughs> thank you. Everybody hit the like button. It does help us. It really does help us when you guys do that. And if you don't mind doing that and you think we deserve it, we would appreciate it. What do you guys think about the rescue movie? I don't know if Woody watched it already. I did. Um, and I mean, it was very emotional for me personally. I, I was very, very proud to be a cave diver after watching that movie. I think they did great justice to the cave diving community. I've never felt more proud of being part of a family. Um, the cave diving family after watching that movie. So for me, I mean, I, I think they did it a great justice and, and I was, I was extremely proud of them and uh, they did a great job. I would add that it shows the level of skill that is needed to accomplish something like that. Just incredible. So. We've gotten a few people asking us to react to the video of Jonathan Bird getting certified by Brian Kaycock. 
You know, I thought about it. Um, we put it on the queue for a while to do it. But, you know, Jonathan Bird does such a good job talking, uh, you know, narrating that video that virtually everything we could have said on that video, he says it. So it will be very, very boring reaction, to be honest. So um, there's no point. Just go watch his video. It's great. You know, every time we would have paused to be like, you know, th he's doing this because of that. As soon as we unpause it, he will say, I'm doing this because of that. Like, it, it would just be boring. We're really good friends with Jonathan Bird. No, not rivals. We are admirers. Yeah. Not rivals at all. I am really, really like him. I think he brings great awareness to the dive community. Yeah, he's awesome. What's the dog's name? Who's Doug? Oh, I just had L lifted up for a while. That's oh. L E L L E, and it's my daughter. Thank you, Patrick, for upgrading to Argonaut. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate that. Let's see. Oh, uh, we yeah, we were talking about if dropping the rebreather mouthpiece. Then do you have to switch to what? We, we are always carrying underneath that mouthpiece. We also have an open circuit regulator that's connected to a tank. So you just put it in your mouth and now you're on open circuit. Yep. How do you guys meet? Uh, Woody was my rescue instructor back in early 2019. Woody, you're the man. New Zealand, New Seagull, New Seagull BCs. Good equipment? I have no idea. A lot of people talking about him and like him. Um, my friend Dave Reiser was recently telling me about it in Mexico, and he likes it a lot. So probably very good equipment. I've not dove with it. Uh, cave diving assisted with augmented reality. Yeah, that could be cool, I guess. I've always wondered what you have set up on your Stream Deck, Gus. I mean, it's a Stream Deck XL, so it's a lot of buttons. It would take an hour to go over all that. Thank you, Catherine, for the super chat. Really helps How us. did you get one of those pink hats, Woody? ShopDiveTalk.com. ShopDiveTalk.com, and that is where I got it. I bought it just like you will buy it. We really don't make anything on that. Minimal, minimal, and we appreciate anything you would buy there. Thank you, Catherine, um, for your super chat as well. Uh, you all married, and if so, are your spouses worried every time you walk out the door? Yes and yes. She's always worried. <laughs> Have you seen deceptively easy way to dive a Lamar higher? Yeah, we actually reacted to that video. It's one of our videos here on Dive Talk. Before you close, you want to, I just want to say I love your channel. Considering diving, you should definitely try it for sure. Do a try scuba at your local dive shop. This is a tough question. How did you first determine what equipment to use? Rebreathers, dive, watch, recommendations, trying every brand. Look, I mean, go to your local dive shop and you're going to go with the brand that they mostly recommend and start with open circuit. And then you're going to want to bond with an instructor at various different levels. And ultimately, that's probably what's going to lead you to the gear you're going to use will be the instructor that you bond with. What are some places you guys will never dive? Um, I, you know, I've seen some of those videos with uh, commercial divers that go into like septic waters and stuff. Those places. I wouldn't dive there. But uh, other than that, uh, nothing really scares me. Are you guys going to Venezuela? I want to, I but, wish. you know, Gus wants to, but he's worried a little bit. Uh, and I can't comment about whether or not it's dangerous and so forth. It but is. If it is, then I, the only way I'm going is if it's with Gus. And right now he doesn't feel comfortable going there. Right. Uh, do we have kids? We do. I have three kids and Woody has two. Um, can you still clear your mask in silt? Yes. I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Of course. course. Yeah, you can feel a little bit. Actually, it's funny. You can feel a little bit of the uh, the granulars of dirt when you're doing it. It's everywhere. Have you ever been to Stingray City in the Cayman Islands? Yes, you know? many, many times. When we when I go to inner space, about a 15-foot dive. The stingrays are everywhere. And 
it's pretty cool. Super clear water. I think you're at like maximum 15 feet. Mm -hmm. Did you make a video about dive gone wrong in Norway? Not yet, but it's coming. It's just hard to find a good video that is not the full length documentary. And if we react to a one and a half hour documentary, then the video will be three hours and it's just tough. So we haven't found a really good one. Are there any foods that you eat while diving? No. I'm drinking apple juice on deco stops. You can put the little straw in the little plastic apple Mark juice. Mark Nelson, thank there. you for becoming an Argonaut. Mm -hmm. Are there any dive sites in Yellowstone that we want to dive Well, there's hot springs that you can't dive them. It's literally boiling water. You well, will, you you will, will probably, burn. You will probably like that. Well, now these are like literally <laughs> boiling, as in boiling temperature. What if you need? What if you need to use the toilet underwater? Uh, if you need to pee, just pee. And I've never had to go number two. <laughs> just hold it, I guess. I don't know. And if you yeah. can't hold it, then just go. Like, like, what are you gonna do? Well, I don't know. I've never had to do it, but well, if you do ever have to do that, number two, go for it. I guess. No, I'm I saying know. if you do in particular, I'm gonna um, what. Why me? Why do you single me out? <laughs> Again, I'm closing my eyes picturing you doing that, and I'm not liking the image. Oh, my and God. I, and I just pictured it while you were in your Speedo, and that's a bad thought that I oh did my not want to have, that I now have. Okay. I've dove in 32-degree water, freezing water, both ice diving and in Iceland. Yeah. I have done ice diving. All right. Ah, F.A. with a smart-ass question. All right, where is it? Me... What do you think about diving in Florida so much and not having found that hidden swamp that you feature in one of your la latest video? Yeah, hidden. Yeah, it's so hidden. I can't even... It's amazing that there's built decks and walkways. And yeah. Weird that all the children and families are swimming around in it as well. Impossible pretty, to pretty find. Hidden. I don't even know how am I gonna find that uh can we get gus and borat swimsuit for the 100,000 video no no they don't make him anymore uh can you get that angry turkish instructor for an interview please no the apple juice underwater i don't want to talk to that guy the apple juice underwater imagine if you're on a rebreather close your loop you put the little straw in your mouth Quickly go back on the loop, and yeah, it's going to taste a little salty-ish with the apple juice, but you'd be surprised. Just, you can do it. Do you guys film yes. together in the same house? Yes. We're, we're there right now. We're together right now. I just handed him something a minute ago. If everybody saw, I gave him a gift, and he took it from my hand. That's funny. That's not silt. That's number two. So if you see me silting on purpose, that now you know. Mm. To hide the tracks. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Hopefully that's why? not my dream tonight. Like why? I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be dreaming about Dude, diving. That's not... why is your why are you flutter kicking in the cave? Your trim is horrible to right now. He said, like, "Well, you know, I don't know, man. It's just not. Yeah, not my day. I guess I'll be like, what is coming why? out of you? <laughs> why are you flutter kicking right now? I can't see I anything, know. and there's nowhere else in the cave silted except for directly behind you what is that well, like five minutes are we in a that's sulfur so area weird. that's because there are sulfur areas at times no that's not why a are you area. unzipping you that's gus <laughs> your your suit all right um see how we deviate sometimes those of you who have dove with us well it's their fault i mean they know that that they happened that oh, what's going on my girl okay. any plans of, of doing an only fans channel Come on. No. Why do people? No, 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 no. All right. They love this channel. Um, Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy the uh, impromptu Q&A. We weren't planning for this. Uh, we recorded some reaction videos earlier today. I don't know what people are going to think about those reaction videos. There was a lot of back and forward. I don't know if people enjoy the back and forward, to be honest. They're like, guys, guys, stop the bickering. People call it bickering. It's like, you look like 
50 year old husband and wife just arguing. I'm 57 year old husband. And it's wife, like we, me. we've been married for 50 years. That's what people say. Okay. Stop arguing. Well, we did not listen to that at all. That's on some definitely of the- <laughs> not going to be the case coming up. And they're pretty good conversations. I, I don't think we, we, we saw eye to eye on, um, on some of the videos. Uh, and yeah, I don't know how many people we're just real. I, my, re- my comment back to that in all seriousness, we're just ourselves. And you know, that's what I like about our channel. We're not going to be something that we're not. We I, don't always agree, which I, maybe makes it interesting that we have different perspectives. I felt like the few people that stuck by me on the stab in the heart video are going to jump ship. Yeah, you'll lose them on this next round. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll gain those as well. Cool. That was. Yeah, that's gonna be it. You'll have. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be all by yourself well, out there. But that's yeah. okay. But I, I've done things at times where they, I've lost them all, and they, they came back. It is what it is. But uh, I mean, thank you, ABN, by the way, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Yes, we appreciate that. But sometimes you know, people are like, "How can you be sure?" And I mean. You can, but it's common sense. Like, I have to say it. It's like, I'm sure because it's common sense. Oh, wait, we're going there again? No, we're ending the show. But I'm just telling people, like, enjoy liking me for a week or whatever, and then it's over. I'm just, anyway, that's all I'm going to say. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. For watching. Thank you. Thank you. We enjoy the questions. It's been a great 2021. I can't wait for you all to see what's coming up in 2022. Really, really epic stuff. I'm Please. serious. Enough with the uh, enough with the whole aliens and octopus questions. I feel like we had enough of that. And no, well, um, well, 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 that's not going away. I mean, we're going to be actually hmm. hopefully filming them, and I'll show you some intelligent things they have taught us. No. But we are going to do some other epic things. I think it will. you'll love some of the real cave diving videos we're going to be showing you. For sure. And I think that that is going to be some of the best footage we've ever come up with. So stay with us. Keep supporting us. We love doing this. And that's why we do it is because we love doing this. And it's because of you. Look at all these questions that you um, that you bring to us. And then also... I really love that it's bringing awareness to the world about just how amazing divers are and that diving is. And the biggest part of our planet is underwater. And look at the heroes that we've exposed. And they deserve that. So I just want to – I'll close with that on my part. Yeah. Nothing.